The Man with the Twisted Lip, страница 22. Holmes flicked the horse and we drove away through the endless chain of empty streets, which widened gradually until we were flying across a broad bridge with the dark river flowing slowly beneath us. Beyond lay another dull, deserted area. In the silence, we could hear only the heavy, regular steps of the policemen. The dark clouds were drifting slowly across the sky, and a star or two twinkled here and there. Holmes drove in silence with his head dropped upon his breast and the look of a man who is lost in thought. I sat beside him, curious to learn what this new quest might be. It seemed to occupy his mind so sorely, but I was afraid to interrupt him. We had driven several miles and were coming close to suburban villas when he shook himself, shrugged his shoulders, and lit up his pipe, looking like a man who has satisfied himself that he is acting for the best. You have a great gift of silence, Watson, said he. It makes you a wonderful companion. I need someone to talk to because my own thoughts are not so pleasant. I was wondering what I should say to this dear little woman tonight when she meets me at the door. You forget that I know nothing about it. I'll have time to tell you the facts of the case before we get to Lim. It seems absurdly simple, and yet somehow I can't solve it. There's plenty of threads, of course, but I can't get the end of it into my hand. Now I'll describe the case clearly and shortly to you, Watson, and maybe you can see the light where all is dark to me. Tell me then. Some years ago, in May 1884, there came to Lee a gentleman whose name was Neville St. Clair, who seemed to have lots of страниц 24, to lay down a garden, разбивать сад, to stand to one's credit, имеется на текущем счету, money. He took a large villa, laid out a very nice garden, and lived generally in good style. Little by little, he made friends in the neighborhood, and in 1887 he married the daughter of a local brewer, and now they have two children. He had no occupation, but was interested in several companies, and went into town as a rule in the morning, returning by the train at 5.14 from Cannon Street every night. Mr. St. Clair is now 37 years old, is a man of modest habits, a good husband, a very loving father, and a man who is popular with all who know him. I may add that his whole debts at the present moment amount to 88 pounds 10 shillings, while he has 220 pounds standing to his credit in the capital and county's bank. So there is no reason to think that money troubles have been pressing him. Last Monday, Mr. Neville St. Clair went into town rather earlier than usual, he said, strings 25, by the merest chance, по чистой случайности, have you followed me so far? Вам пока что все ясно? Before he went away that he had two important commissions uh, for that day and that he would bring his little boy home a box of bricks. 
Now, by the mere chance, his wife received a telegram the same Monday, very shortly after his departure, that a small parcel of considerable value, which she had been expecting, was waiting for her at the offices of the Aberdeen Shipping Company. Now, if you know London very well, you remember that the office of the company is in Fresno Street, which branches out of Upper Swandam Lane, where you found me tonight. Mrs. St. Clair had her lunch, went to the city, did some shopping, came to the company's office, got her pa packet, and at exactly 4.35, she was walking through Swandam Lane on her way back to the station. Have you followed me so far? It is very clear. Страница 26. To be struck cold, похладеть от ужаса. Feminine eye, женский взгляд. If you remember, Monday was a very hot day, and Mrs. Sanclair walked slowly, looking around as she hoped to see a cab, because she did not like the neighborhood where she was. While she was walking in this way down Swandam Lane, she suddenly heard an exclamation or cry, and was struck cold to see her husband looking down at her, and as it seemed to her calling her from a second floor window, the window was open, and she distinctly saw his face, which she describes as being terribly anxious. He waved his hands frantically to her, and then disappeared from the window so suddenly that it seemed to her that he had been plucked back by some irresistible force from behind them. The only thing which she could notice with her quick feminine eye was that although he wore some duck coat, such as he had gone to town in, he had on neither collar nor necktie.